everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today is really exciting because we get to continue our How to LS Swap Something series. Today's episode is all about putting a shifter in. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor, Summit Racing. They have been the most incredible sponsor I've ever worked with. They've sent me tons of parts to bolt onto our car. They helped us build our engine. We did a Ford build with them. We've done all kinds of amazing things with their parts and they are the best place on the internet to buy your speed parts. They have great selection, awesome customer service. They are the ones to go to. So make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com. Like I said, we're putting a shifter in today. Now, if you already have your transmission in and your shifter is already ready to go, awesome. You can actually skip this video. This is just for if you're putting in a new transmission into a car that never really had that transmission. So ours had a uh, an old power glide from the 50s in our 1955 Bel Air and we wanted to put something a little more modern in there so we ended up putting a turbo 350. Obviously all of that is incompatible with each other so we have to put in our own provisions for a shifter and it's really not that bad and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let's get into it. So before we install our shifter, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of build it and put it how I want it, um, just so I can get the mock-up just right. And I have our handle right here, sent over from Summit Racing, part number, and link is down below in the description. Now this bad boy is the actual you know, gated shifter. This is what where the magic basically happens and is the mechanical means of shifting through your gears, which you're gonna have to tell Summit Racing or you know on the website which transmission you have. See, ours has for a TH350 slash 400. I will leave a link down below in the description to this bad boy, but you are going to have to do it for whatever transmission you have, so you have to know that crucial information. So we can take that out of the box and have already taken a look at this bad boy. So there is the unit itself. Looks absolutely fantastic. Some instructions. You got some linkage here, some arms for sweeping and mounting, and a Tremec lever package. Interesting. So that is all good to go there. Now, for the exciting part. This is what you're actually going to be interfacing with all the time, and especially on our transmission, because it is manual valve body, you're, I'm going to have to downshift things manually. So I'm going to be interfacing with this gear shift quite a lot. So S Summit was so generous and sent over this ultra premium all built aluminum unit, and it feels fantastic in the hand and is ready to bolt right in. So I have my assembled unit, looks like a million freaking bucks. And what we can do is just kind of plot out how we want it. Do we want it way up here? Do you want it back here more? You want to make that decision nice and final because once it's bolted down, it's not going anywhere. Make sure you, you can move your seat forward and back depending on the different drivers. Mine's in the perfect position. I can't imagine anybody wanting it any further forward. And then keep in mind the sweep of the gears as well. Is this going to hit the seat or center console or whatever you have? So you just want to be mindful of that. And since this is a full manual valve body, like I said, I'm going to be interfacing with this all the time. So I really want it to be comfortable to hand as well. So take your time. So I think right here is very excellent and I can mark that down. So now we can grab a Sharpie and we're just going to mark all four of these holes. Don't feel too bad about this carpet. It's going to have holes in it anyway from when we drill in the bolt holes for this. Oh yeah, look at that, four nice holes. So now what we're gonna do is take our center punch, put it on our marks, and give that a really good smack. And there we go. Now what we can do is remove our interior, or at least the front bit, we need to take the seat out and the carpet. Okay, I've got all my mounting hardware disconnected, now I can take the seat out. And depending on your seats, you might have buckets, but I have a bench, so it has to come out all as one piece. Alrighty. And here we go. So typically when you remove carpet, it's usually held in place with trim around the door seals and maybe even glued in place, so you might have to defeat that. I've already done that. So we can just pull our carpet out, revealing our transmission tunnel. Alrighty, I've got our pilot holes drilled out. I can go ahead and verify that they're correct before we start making the holes any bigger by putting the shifter on. Those all line up, so that's perfect. 
then I can take my step bit here and don't go too far down into the sheet metal. You don't want to hit the transmission or anything. That'll depend on those various clearances are going to depend on whatever car you have. I happen to know there's a decent amount of room, but still, I thought I'd mention it. So now I'm going to grab my step bit and go to 5 sixteenths because that's the size we need. There we go. Make sure you don't go too crazy. So now my holes are all nice and drilled. I can put my bolts through and put the nuts on from down below. All right, so now I have the nuts on the back side and I have a helper holding that on. You know, f find a neighbor, get a <laughs> grab your loved one, have them do this for you. Uh, it's a half inch on the back side and it is a three sixteenths Allen for the top here. We're just gonna snug that down. It's pretty good. And then we can swap to the top one. Tighten that down. And there we go. Now, I'm not doing this as a permanent installation. I'm only doing this so that way I can mark over here where the arm is going to sweep. So with our shifter mocked up where it's going to be, we can grab our shifter arm here that we think is going to work. And that's going to depend on your situation. You're going to have to kind of eyeball it. The, it did come with a, um, two or three of these. And I looked at it, and I think this one is going to be my winner. Obviously, you can't do anything because the transmission hump's in the way. But what you can do is flip it upside down and the shifters in park, match it up where it's going to kind of go and extend it all the way down. Then we're going to grab our Sharpie and we're going to make like a rectangle-ish, half rectangle shape around where that arm is going to go. Like that. That looks pretty good. And then we can move it to uh, the lowest gear, or our, our case is our first gear, and uh, we can do the same thing. And there we go. And so what we can do now we have both of our uh, rectangles drawn on there is we can grab our jigsaw. Well, first we're going to drill some holes and then we're going to grab our jigsaw and just connect the dots and then we're going to have our nice slot. So before we go pilot hole drilling, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my center punch and line it up on those dots. Give us a little divot for the uh, bit to sit in. That looks pretty good. Grab a small drill. And again, make sure that your transmission isn't too close to the uh, transmission hump. Ours has like three or four inches. It's pretty significant. And then we can grab our step bit and make those holes quite a bit bigger. How big, you ask? Big enough to fit our jigsaw blade in, so quite a bit bigger. That looks right. Oops. Excellent. So now we can grab our jigsaw. Again, make sure it's not going to hit the transmission while you're doing this. And we're just going to follow those uh, half rectangles I made earlier. Right on. That looks great. So now we're sure that our slot is going to work and our shifter is perfect. We can go ahead and reinstall our carpet. So I have a helper on the underside of the car. Be careful here. I have him using a uh, very sharp straight implement. I'm going to kind of hold the carpet down while he's poking it through. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I can grab my step bit and follow it down as he's pulling it out. And then the step bit works great on carpet because it doesn't wind up into it. It'll make a nice hole for us. I know it doesn't kind of look like much, but look, you can get something through there and it'll look nice and flush with the carpet. So we can just do that for all four holes and we'll be in the shade. Okay, using the same technique before to cut our slot, I'm just going to hold down the carpet, keeping my hands away from it while my helper pokes up through the slot right in the middle on one side, that's good. And then right where it's poked through, I'm just going to leave a nice black dot. Go ahead and pull it out. There we go. And then we got to do the other side as well. There we go. That's good. And then another nice, that's good. And then another nice black dot here. 
Okay, so that is right in the middle of our slot, these two black dots. So what we can do now is take a brand new box cutter, be very careful as it is very sharp, and I'm just gonna cut it down the middle as best as I can, and that'll create a nice slot for us. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we can grab our arm, try to fish it through there. And look at that. Yeah! That looks great. All right, now we can put our shifter down. <laughs> For installation here. Grab our bolts. You know, our carpet is just so thick and the padding is so dense that I got some longer bolts here. Typically, it'll be okay with the ones provided. And then on the bottom side, I have a helper putting on our lock nuts and washers. And I also put some large washers on there and then we can tighten them up. So with all our fasteners on, we can go ahead and tighten them down as evenly as we can. Let's go across on the X. Okay, let's go uh, top fast or driver. And last one. First one again. On the X. And there we go, that's nice and installed. But before we go testing it, what I want to do is make sure that these Allens on the base of the shifter are nice and snug. So we're just going to grab a ratchet. I'll oh, see it needed need a little more there. That feels pretty good. All right, all those Allens are nice and tight now. So the next thing we need to do is put the arm on the uh, transmission side. We can go ahead and remove our nut here. And you can see it has some grooves here that line up with the arm that came from with our kit. And we can put that on like that. That looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and start this nut. I'm not gonna tighten it down just yet. And then we wanna make sure that we are in the parked position. And the way you do that is you just take the lever and go all the way to the right or clockwise and it'll kind of be in a one o'clock position. Alternatively, if your arm is going to go on the bottom, you want it pointing this way. So maybe like uh, a seven o'clock position. So that's how you know you're in park. You can just tighten that 916 down. Might be different for you. Make sure it's flush with the transmission casing. And just snug it up. That is plenty. Okay, so now we can try to install our linkage. And most of the time it's going to require a little bit of modification. Uh, especially when it comes to these uh, solid linkages here. So what I've done is already screwed in this thread about halfway into this heim joint. And then I'm gonna just loosely install it. You know, just put the nut on like finger tight. There we go for the shifter side. Now we can look at the transmission side. So on the transmission side, you can kind of see where this heim joint needs to go. It needs to go right about there on our arm. And then we can look and see on the thread where we want to cut it. And we want to cut it about halfway into the threads of our heim joint like that. That looks great. So here's our black mark from earlier. I've already installed uh, my die for my tap and die set. It is a quarter 28. In case you're wondering what size that is, uh, some people like to just use the nuts and back the nuts off afterward to get the kind of the burr from the cut uh, out of there. I don't like doing that. You have a chance of ruining the nut and I don't know, I like keeping the set with it. So let's go ahead and get out either a hacksaw or I have a electric bandsaw. That makes very short work of it. And now I can back off my die. And it's going to carve those threads out for me and keep them nice for when we're installing it. And there we go, ready for installation. 
So the next thing we're going to do is actually tighten this heim joint on our transmission with an Allen and our 7 16 ratcheting wrench there. Nice and snug. Make sure it still moves, which it does. That looks awesome. Then we can put our linkage about halfway into our heim joint here. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now we can put our heim joint in place and you can see it's just a little bit too long, but remember, our joints are only about halfway installed so we can wind the heim joint on until we get that distance perfectly good. Ooh, that kind of seems like it. Let's let's chest it out. Not quite. A little more. Too much. There we go. See how easy that bolt went in? It should be able to come in and out really easily like that. That is absolutely perfect. And now we can put our backing nut on. <clears throat> there we go, that looks pretty good. So then we can grab our jam nut and spin that all the way down where it meets the heim. There we go, that looks nice. And then we're gonna grab a 3 8 wrench to hold the heim and a 7 16 wrench for the jam nut. We're just gonna snug that down. <clears throat> like that, perfect. Do the same thing for over back by the shifter. 3 8 and 7 16 Snug that down. Oh yeah. So now we can test our shifter, make sure it works. Have it park here. Reverse. Oops, neutral. Drive. Goes into another detent to get us into second and first. So we'll have this one, two shift, one, two, one, two, kind of a lot. So it's good that it works well. So that's how to put your own shifter on your uh, LS swap. It's really not that hard. Cutting the sheet metal is probably the hardest part, but even that's not that challenging if you have the right tools. And I will leave links down below in the description of those bad boys. We are really coming down to it on our LS swap. I know this has taken a few videos uh, to get through, but I wanted to be as thorough as possible. That way I can help as many people as possible because I'd rather answer a lot of questions than leave anybody behind. So I'm doing my absolute best to be as uh, concise but conclusive as possible. It has been an absolutely amazing journey. We are really coming down to the end of this LS swap and very shortly we're gonna be able to wire this thing up and hear it run. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Leave the video a like if it's helped you at all. Thank you Summit Racing for sponsoring this video series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.